watch this next woman's video. This next woman is speaking about what is going on with L.A. Reid and the woman that is bringing her lawsuit against L.A. Reid. Now, this woman that she's speaking on definitely has receipts. You could tell it, and she wants a jury trial. After that woman's video, I'm going to be talking about what's going on with Harve Pierre and some of what is going on with Aaron Hall. What is going on with all of these situations being illuminated? What was done back in the 90s coming out now? It is amazing. And I am sure that we have not seen the end of what is to come. And I'm sure that so many artists and executives and people that were in the surrounding, you know, the orbit, they are probably really scared of what is about to come out. Go ahead. Watch till the end. Watch to the end and let me know what you think about all of this. I'm not a lawyer, but L.A. Reid has also been accused of S.A. in a lawsuit that was filed under the Adult Survivors Act. And I read all 28 pages, so let me give you a recap. The lawsuit was filed by a woman named Drew Dixon. And Drew is a music producer, entrepreneur, former general manager of John Legend's record label, and a host of other titles. The lawsuit actually details a really impressive career for Drew, including signing Nas to a publishing deal, also overseeing every aspect of the recording of Method Man and Mary J's You're All I Need. So as far as the actual allegations, the lawsuit starts with alleging that in 1995, Drew was brutally by Russell Simmons, resulting in her forced departure from her job at Def Jam at the time. So following Def Jam, Drew was hired at Arista Records. In the year 2000, L.A. Reid became president of Arista Records and Drew started reporting directly to him. Now the two had known each other prior to this, but once Drew started working for L.A., the suit says that he was very flirtatious with her, including a time when L.A. asked Drew to come with him and his wife to look for apartments in New York. They were moving there from Atlanta. But once Drew arrived, she realized that L.A.'s wife was never coming. It was just her, LA, and the realtor. And according to this lawsuit, LA made flirtatious comments throughout the appointment. Eventually, the realtor commented that, that LA was clearly in love with her. So in January of 2001, the suit alleges that there was a company-wide retreat in Puerto Rico. The company was handling all of the travel arrangements and at the last minute, Drew was told that all of the senior level execs would be traveling over on a private plane. The lawsuit says that Drew boarded the plane and discovered that the only people on the plane was her and L.A. Reid. L.A. asked her to sit next to him to go over materials and then allegedly began playing with her hair, kissing her, and then assaulting her. Now, the second assault alleged in the complaint stems from a work event in 2001 in which L.A. Reid allegedly asked Drew to join him for a ride and that he would drop her off. According to the suit, Drew had been avoiding L.A. since the Puerto Rico incident, but according to her, that was resulting in him not approving her artist or preventing her from moving forward with her work. So Drew takes the ride and hopes that since there's a driver that nothing would happen. But according to the lawsuit, shortly into the ride, LA began allegedly groping her, kissing her, and assaulting her again. Following the second alleged assault, Drew says she ignored and avoided LA, but it resulted in him sabotaging her career, including passing on Kanye West when she brought him in, and canceling multiple appointments and performance auditions for John Legend. The suit says that because L.A. Reid and these assaults drove Drew out of the music industry, we lost the ear that heard My Love Is Your Love as a demo and brought it for Whitney Houston, the person who had a hand in The Boy Is Mine for Brandy and Monica, and the person that spotted artists such as Kanye West, John Legend, Toya, and Alice Smith. So all of these things are attributed to Drew Dixon in this lawsuit. And because of these assaults, it says that she left this industry. The suit says she's lost out on money, her career, and even suffered severe depression. Drew in the lawsuit gives an example as recent as 2017 in which she says that L.A. Reid, even now, decades later, is punishing her for having refused to submit to his sexual demands. The lawsuit also notes that Miss Dixon has been told that although she is well-known, well-respected, and highly qualified, she is essentially blackballed because she has spoken out against Mr. Simmons and Mr. Reed. Thus, the harm is ongoing and unceasing. So she is suing for battery and assault, false imprisonment, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and for violation of the Gender Motivated Violence Act. And she has requested a jury trial.
so many skeletons are tumbling out of the closet um, surrounding Diddy, um, Bad Boy Entertainment, 90s R&B, all of that. All of these skeletons are tumbling out of the closet. And whatever Cassie opened up, this door that she opened up, so much more is being revealed. Former Bad Boy President Harv Pierre sued for alleged SA and negligence. The label's president, ex-assistant, alleges he used to he used his position of authority as her boss to groom, exploit, and SA her. So many of these stories are coming out. Just days after Diddy settled with Cassie, who accused him of grape um, trafficking and DV, a former president of Bad Boy Records has been accused of grooming um, SE actual harassment and SA by a former assistant. In the documents obtained by People, a Jane Doe plaintiff has alleged that Harpier, a longtime executive of Bad Boy, used his position of authority to groom, exploit, and SA her. According to the anonymous assistant, Pierre engaged in a year-long pattern of grooming the plaintiff, leading to a SE actual harassment of plaintiff and SA. The filing claims that Pierre um, SA'd her, SA'd the plaintiff on multiple occasions in New York City and other locations throughout the country during 2016 and 2017. As a result, she claims she suffered physical, psychological, and emotional injuries. The plaintiff is asking for damages that fully and fairly compensate um, for these alleged injuries. Defendants fail to properly supervise Pierre, properly supervise plaintiff, and protect plaintiff from a known danger and thereby enable Pierre's um, SAs of the plaintiff. That's what the lawsuit alleges. The plaintiff also claimed that the defendants knew or should have known that Pierre was not fit to be in a position of authority. Um, we have recently become aware of a lawsuit filed in New York by a former employee the allegations are from many years ago that were never brought to the attention of the company. So they're trying to downplay it because it was a long time ago. Neither the plaintiff nor the executives is, I should say, are our current employees of the company. And we are now investigating the allegation. And our top priority is the safety and well-being of our employees, a bad boy entertainment spokesperson said in a statement. So you have that um, lawsuit, you have all of the lawsuits against Diddy, but lawsuit number three against Diddy roped in Aaron Hall. Now you can find the interviews with Aaron Hall. He had an interview with DJ Vlad on Vlad TV. And I don't know when that interview happened, but this was posted back um, on TikTok on October 30th. So this was before all of the brouhaha started happening. And if you go to Twitter, you can see it. But if you watch this, if you watch the unedited version, his language is so inappropriate. It's so, it's so bad. How you can hear how he talks about women and all the things that he is saying, the names that he is dropping. And I believe he's saying all of these names to drop, to give him a little bit more credence, a little bit more credibility. But he is basically corroborating all of these allegations with all of this, all of his debauchery that's tumbling out of his mouth and talking about how um, he used to just take women as in they don't, they didn't really consent. They didn't really have a say in it. It is bad. I'm not sure if, um, if it's friendly enough for the YouTube, um, the YouTube world, but these TikToks um, show them. And on Twitter, you can find the unedited versions of this man's um, interview. But what irked me is that the people that he was talking to were laughing at his conversation and how he acted and behaved with women. Like this was so funny. And the way Aaron Hall was so confident in how he was treating these women and saying this stuff publicly, you knew that he was not ashamed of his behavior, that this was just normal behavior for someone like him. All of these things that keep coming out about these people just goes to show that these people with a little bit of money, authority, and a position of power are dangerous.